Today, it's a brand new project, and it's one we've never done before. It's a full-on Frame Dragon mini truck. First, we'll take a trip to check out one of the coolest mini truck fab shops around. Then, we'll tear into our Nissan so we can lay the frame on the ground. It's all here today on Trucks. Welcome to Trucks, and today is a good day, because today we're starting a whole new project, something you guys have been asking for for a long time and has never been done on trucks before. That's right. You've seen us build compact trucks like S10K here, but that's a different goal. This was a budget muscle truck. Hit it. But this is going to be a full-on custom mini truck. Now, we know you mini truck guys are not posers, so we're going to go the whole nine yards on this hard body. And by the time we're through with this build, we're going to be dragging frame all over the streets and tucking 20s. Now, the mini truck scene is huge with great projects and incredible workmanship coming out of that genre. And that's what trucks is all about. And we've been hearing rumors about a high-end fab shop that specializes in minis. And the same creepy name keeps coming up all the time, the Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> Eric Saliba runs one of the premier mini truck shops on the East Coast, cranking out totally custom frame dragon, spark flying, and sometimes just freaky trucks, all of them with an edge. Uh, mini trucks, you know, for me, say, it's, it's a rebellious thing. You know, go to a mini truck show, you're gonna find guys that have been up for six weeks worth of nights, getting something together that's just crazy, you know, get, trying to create something that's, that's truly different uh, and get to the show. You know, you're going to see them dragging around, you know, destroying what they've spent all that hard time making, and it's fun. It's fun to see it. It's fun to see the guys get into it. But sometimes they can get into it a little too much. Now this is over the top. Tell me about this thing. Well, this is what happens when things get out of hand at your friendly <laughs> neighborhood chop shop. <laughs> Uh, this used to be two, two cabs, uh, two doors, some fenders, uh, we've got combine wheels, we've got a flathead motor, a uh, tractor grill, the reel. all sorts of crazy parts, throw them in a big pot, mix it up, and this is what you end up with. Now most work for customers isn't quite as radical, but in this shop, it's still all about drag and frame. This is the frame for that expedition, right? Sure is. Well, it's only stock from here up. You guys have fabricated everything from there back. How low will this lay out? Tell you what, this one will go all the way down to the ground. Show me. That's it. <laughs> that is awesome. But even with all the extreme metal coming out of the little shop, there's still a few standard approaches to building a mini truck. Most of these trucks, what everybody wants to do, and get it as low as possible, get the big rollers on it, you know, get, get it all tucked up in the fenders. That's, that's usually the key, so. Yeah. Uh, if that's your goals, then you're gonna need a, a C-notch in the rear at least, uh, probably a triangulated four link to keep the rear end located and, uh, and go from there. It's the C-notch that gives you a stance like this. So, what is it? A C-notch is simply a box tubing or flat stock that's welded together to give a little more clearance in the frame right above the axle. So in a nutshell, it's just a relief so the axle can travel. Exactly. Now, those are the basics, but Eric also knows what's hit. I tell you what's hot right now is the suicide doors. Yeah. Swinging them backwards. So some people are doing the Lambos, but us here at the Little Shop, we prefer the suicide doors. Right. Well, you know, uh, uh, suicide doors have been a part of hot rodding since the 50s, man. It's exactly. a very cool thing. He also knows it's good to keep in mind all the work that it takes to build a mini truck. Stick with what you can accomplish. Uh, it's, it's really, with the mini trucks, a lot of times I see people that are, I want this and this and this and this, and it's going to be done next week. And it's, you know, if you really step back and look at what's being done, it's, it's a 21st century street ride. You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of work that goes into it that you don't necessarily see. Nuts and bolts stuff that, that people don't know. And that, a lot of projects get built halfway and never make it for that reason. But there's one thing you can count on, no matter how ambitious the project, if it's from the Little Shop of Horrors, not only will it get done right, but it's gonna be cool. Well, this is serious. We've got a couple spikes here, some skulls, a little something dangerous. Watch your finger on it. 
Eric, that looks awesome. You guys do great work. Thanks for showing us your shop, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming. We got a parting gift for you. This is a little shop switch box. The logo machined in the back there. This ought to get you started on your Nissan. <laughs> That's great, dude. Thank you. Good deal. All right. Hey, got a question. Do you charge by the spike on this one? Yeah, we were running a special that day. <laughs> <laughs> that little shop was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah. Now we got some serious inspiration now to start digging into this thing, get it ready for the four link bags, the whole works. But we're not just going to throw a kid at this truck, are we? Oh, no. We're going to show you guys how to scratch build your own drop system right after the break. Coming up next, we're tearing apart our hard body and making room for our new axle and four link. Hey, welcome back to Trucks, where we're just getting ready to dig into our new project, something that's never been done on trucks before, this 97 hard body mini truck. And when we get through with it, the only way it can sit any lower is if it sat under the road. Now we got to strip this thing down to pretty much the frame and the rear axle. But before you start hacking stuff up and tossing stuff on the pile, remember that the ECM of the truck needs all of these sensors to run properly. So if you have to relocate some things for clearance, make sure you plug them back in. Hey. We want this truck to sit so low that the frame literally drags on the ground, and you just can't do it with leaf springs. So what most guys do is completely get rid of the factory system and put in a four-link system that sits on air springs and gives us the ultimate in control over both the drop and the ride height. We're keeping a straight axle at the rear. This means we got to C-notch the frame so that our axle has enough room to move for when the frame is on the ground at full drop. The last thing we want to do is start hacking on the frame before we establish our axle center point. We want to keep the factory axle positioned so the wheels sit squarely in the wells just like the factory truck. Now here's where we had to make a decision. Our Nissan truck has a six lug bolt pattern and let's face it, there's just not as much wheel and tire selection for a six lug pattern. So what we decided to do is swap in this rear axle which comes from a Toyota two wheel drive pickup that has the five bolt pattern that we want and the wheel and tire selection that we want. Now that is what you call a suspension drop. <laughs> now it's time to set our ride height. So we'll take our Toyota axle and set it level with the frame. I'm right at four inches. Yeah, I'm four and a half. Right on. Right on. First, we center the Toyota rear end in the frame. Then, by using old U-bolts tack welded to the frame rail, we can lock the rear end in place at ride height. This allows us to rotate the axle assembly and adjust the pinion angle. Once the pinion angle is set to zero degrees, we'll weld the axle to the U-bolt until our four link is completed. All right, hit it. That's it. All right, with our Nissan stripped down, our Toyota axle locked into place, now we can start building that four link. That's right, Kev. So while you guys take a break, we're going to go fire up that cold saw. When we get back, we're building our four link from scratch. And then later, we're C notching the frame so we can go really low. Hey, welcome back to Trucks and our Frame Dragon Mini Truck Project. So why a 97 Nissan King Cab? Well, some of the coolest mini trucks we've seen are these old hard bodies. And Nissan made this body style for 11 years, so everybody's going to know what it is. But they stopped making them in 1998. So it's kind of a cool challenge, sort of off the beaten path, and we're up for it. Besides, we got tons of room in the back for a kick and sound system. Now, you guys have seen us add a universal four-link before. Remember Project Old School? But this time, we're going to build our own four-link, and we'll show you how. But like old school, this project requires good welding skills. So, if you guys don't know how to weld, find a buddy that can, because there's a lot of fabrication in this project. 
A four-link system is usually found on a high-performance vehicle. The main reason being is that you have better axle control under extreme driving conditions. Our Nissan, like a lot of other trucks, is designed with a Hotchkiss drive suspension system. Basically, two leaf springs and a live axle. Technology literally borrowed from a horse and buggy. Don't get me wrong, it works just fine, but there's a lot better systems out there, especially for our truck. With the four link, you can adjust your axle location, set your pinion angle, and tune the degree of anti-squat, which is exactly what it sounds like. The vehicle accelerates, the weight transfers back, and the back end of the vehicle squats down. But by choosing the point to which we call the instant center, which is where the two link bars meet, you can literally tune the vehicle suspension to the type of driving experience you want to have. Now all that's fine for a performance vehicle, but with this mini truck, we've got one single goal in mind, to lay the frame on the ground. When you're designing your four link to eliminate the need for a track bar or panard bar, build in at least 40 degrees of triangulation into the upper links. That keeps the axle centered in the frame. Now, if you're wondering why we're using square tubing on the lower links, it's a simple answer. Square tube makes it really easy to mount the rear bags on the bars themselves instead of on the axle. This will allow us to at least double the travel of our airbags by taking advantage of leverage depending on where we place the bags on the link bar. You can make your own link bar ends by using round tubing and aftermarket leaf spring bushings. Ours are rubber, easy to find, and cheap. While the lower link is non-adjustable, the uppers will be. That way we can fine tune our pinion angle and keep our drive shaft vibration to a minimum. At ride height, the lower link bar needs to be as close to parallel to the road as possible. Our lower bars are 36 inches long, and by using longer bars, we can minimize the amount of arc in the suspension travel, and that gives us greater range of motion without binding. We needed to create a cross member to mount our upper link bars, and the front mounting brackets for the bed are a perfect location. Using square tubing here will also stiffen the frame and strengthen the whole rear chassis. Our upper bars are made of inch and a quarter thick walled DOM tubing. We'll drill and tap one end for a heim joint that'll give us the adjustability we need to fine tune our pinion angle and also eliminate suspension binding. All right. I've already tacked in place the upper right-hand link bar. Now this is called a triangulated four link, and the cool thing about this is that we don't need a panhard bar with this system because the aggressive angle of the upper links stops side-to-side -side movement in the rear axle. With the U-bolts gone, we can actually see our axle travel up and down. Now that works great, but to get this rig as low as we want to get it, we got to do something different. That means C-notch in this frame. And we're going to show you guys how to do that right after the break. Up next, it's the art of the C-notch and some slight bed modifications. Hey, welcome back to Trucks. Our Nissan hard body is getting lower by the minute, and it's about to get even lower. We've completely ripped out the factory leaf spring suspension and added our own triangulated four link. Now this is low, but it's still not low enough to get us to lay frame. So we're going to C-notch the rear frame so we have even more room for the rear axle to travel. Now really all we're doing is creating an arch for our axle to travel into. Now we could box something up out of flat stock, but I like to use this preform tubing. Not only is it faster for this C-notch, but you can also route your wires and plumbing through it. it. makes a nice, neat job. Now we could just make a square notch for our axle relief, but if you add just a little bit of angle, it does a couple of things. Not only does it box itself in, and we don't have an opening to deal with, it also adds strength due to the opposing forces of the angle. Besides that, it just looks better. Bevel the edges to allow better weld penetration. This is especially important if you plan on smoothing the weld for a show quality finish. That way, you don't grind away all the weld strength. The wheels and tires we want to put in this truck have an outside diameter of 26 and a half inches. I want to lay the frame on the road, which is represented by this piece of steel. So I'll measure from the axle center point half the diameter of the wheel, which is 13 and a quarter inches. And that tells me that with those wheels and tires on, my frame's going to be just about five inches off the ground. Not good. No sparks. So our axle has to come up 
at least five inches in order to lay the frame. And that means that this part of the frame has got to go away. But with our new C-notch, this is going to give us almost 11 inches, nearly twice as much as what we want. But let's face it, let's do this once and do it right. We've already got to cut the bed floor out to clearance this stuff. And this way, we've got lots of room if we want to switch to larger diameter wheels later on or other custom mods. Make sure you weld the C-notch to the frame before cutting the relief away. This locks the back of the frame in the correct location. Using cardboard as a template, we'll make boxing plates out of 3 16 flat stock and weld them to the frame rail for added strength and a cleaner look. You don't have to have a plasma cutter to hack up your frame. A sawzall or a cutoff wheel works just fine. For a clean cut, clamp a straight edge to your work to serve as a guide. Then just drag the plasma cutter tip along the edge. With the C-notch installed and the extra metal out of the way, cap the open ends of the factory frame. Since we've created a giant C-notch out back, we've got to cut out the bed floor for a frame, axles, and tire clearance. <laughs> we can make a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. All right, give it a shot. <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah. That is low. It doesn't get any lower. <laughs> Looks like you're going uphill all the time. Next time you see this truck, we're going to take care of that lame stock front end. Hey, I want to show you one of the best cold air systems to hit the market. This is the Fram Boost 2 performance intake, and it fits over 40 different models. At its core is this mandrel bent aluminum inlet pipe that's the result of dyno testing across your engine's RPM range. Feeding this is an oilless pleated gauze filter that traps dirt particles as small as one micron. The element is reusable and doesn't have to be oiled to trap dirt. The heat shield is powder-coated 16-gauge steel that protects the air filter from water splash and road debris. Fittings and brackets are TIG welded and it complies with most states' emission standards. We're installing ours on a 91 Jeep, but Fram claims that in a Ford Lightning the system picked up 21 horses and 37 foot-pounds of torque and it's consistent with manufacturer's warranties. The Fram Boost 2 performance intake system for truck applications starts at about 220 bucks. Thanks for watching trucks. See you next week.